Recently I've been using an M4 MacBook Pro for work and I'm not a big fan of Mac OS personally. However, I've noticed that there are some things in it that Windows could definitely benefit from and vice versa. So these last few weeks, I've been trying to make uh, my Windows experience sort of flow in a way that Mac OS does with all the Windows bells and whistles. So one of these things I wanted to tackle was the forced use of yellow folders. Now, Mac OS doesn't let you customize the color of its folders. However, I feel like the color of the blue folders on the dark background is very unintrusive and nice on the eyes. So today we're going to be looking at any ways we can turn the folder into any color we would like. I looked at using 7TSP originally and building myself the images manually. However, I found this to be very difficult and never turned out 100% correct. In the end, I've gone with a stranger solution that works for me and may work for you as well. So here we are on my desktop and I've got three folders here. One of them is an empty folder. One of them is a folder with a folder inside and one of them is a folder with thumbnail. And as you can see, they're all blue. I really like the color blue on darker backgrounds. I feel like it's really nice on the eyes, especially if you've had a day of working already and you just want to use your computer recreationally. So if I open up these file explorer window here, these are the ICO files that Windows uses as thumbnails in your operating system. I managed to extract them using another tool and these are literally one for one the same images. So what we can do here is open an application like Photoshop. Once Photoshop's open, uh, we're going to go to one of these files. We'll go to this one first and do open with Adobe Photoshop. Oh, this is because I've got a plugin on to work with ICO files. Uh, it will still work with you. Uh, this is for exporting. Um, and we're going to choose a different file as well. We're going to choose one um, maybe with this icon just to show how it works with a more complicated icon. So in this case, say now I would like uh, these to be uh, purple. I can first of all maybe go to helpful sites and could go to this website like uh, Coolers and we can say uh, purple. And we'll find a purple we like. We could say like this, this purple. Head back into Photoshop. Uh, we can change the brush to be this color. Stick it on a new layer, give a little bit of a brush here. And then on this layer, we can take the hue and saturation and we'll just drag the hue around until we find something close to the purple that we like. That's pretty close. We're not going to go for perfection here. We're just going to try and see what we can do. So if we delete this layer, we can flatten these out. We can do the same here. So if I grab hue and saturation, and it was minus 138. Now, as you can see, it's had this really strange effect on these two. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to take that away and I'm going to select these. So for this one specifically, we could do this in a number of ways. We could use the magic wand tool, which does a pretty good job. Or we could do uh, color filters, color range, sorry. Select this, select this, and go to OK, and it selected them. Or alternatively, we could manually select them, say, like using the marquee tool. Uh, there's also an elliptical tool. We got it right in the middle, say. Uh, in our case, we're going to do the color range tool because it seems to do a pretty good job. And I'm also going to select this little bit as well. Now, you may have little straggly pixels. However, I'm not going to really worry about those because these get shrunk down to so small that you wouldn't really see them. And then on the hue and saturation um, mask layer, we can just, first of all, re-enable this. Then we're going to press B to activate the brush. And we're just going to draw with the color black over these. And then do Command D or Control D to deselect. There you go. So these now are two examples that I will save to the desktop. So we're going to go to File, Save as Copy, Desktop. Uh, we don't want to save this as an ICO file. We're going to save this as a PNG file. Uh, smaller size, always. Uh, 
Okay, so we've got some PNG files on the desktop now. Obviously, you're going to actually want to do this for all of these files, the same process, and some of them are a bit more difficult than others. I find this is one of the more difficult ones, and the world one is one of the more difficult ones. Uh, the rest are fairly easy, and obviously with these ones, because it's a darker patch of the yellow, you don't really have to cut them out. You can just leave those be changed with the human saturation edits. So then, with these PNG files, we can do this. We're going to open GIMP. We're going to open an image uh, on the desktop. So we'll go for this file. We're going to zoom in with control scroll. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer another seven times. Now going from the top layer, we're going to go on a right click on it and we're going to want to resize scale layer. And we're going to want to knock it down to 16 pixels by 16 pixels and drag it into the very corner, should snap that. The next one, we're gonna to wanna to do at 20 pixels by 20 pixels. Drag that into the corner. Then 24 by 24 pixels. Then 32 by 32. Then 40 by 40. Then 48 by 48. Then 64 by 64. And then finally, 256 by 256. Now what you're going to want to do now is reorder these layers uh, so that the smallest is at the back and the biggest is at the front. There we go. Then you're going to want to go to File, Export As, Export to the Desktop and choose File. Then we're going to want to go Microsoft Windows icon and export. There we are. We'll know you've done this right if they come up in size order like this. Disable the compressed PNG. Export. There we go. And then we have our finished ICO file. The only thing with this is you need to do this a bunch of times. So I've done these all for the blue ones. These are the PNG files, which I've edited manually. And then these are the ICO files. Oh yes, I, I didn't mention earlier, I managed to edit this file. However, changing it um, with the tool I was using doesn't have an effect on the taskbar version. So um, apologies for that, but um, it's still worth doing in my eyes. So the next thing we're going to want to do is open our web browser again and go to this site. It's on Major Geeks. It's for an app called Customizer God. It's quite an old app. It was used for uh, editing these icons on older versions of Windows. And even though it'll come up with some errors, it will still work. We're going to want to take it to the downloads folder and click save. Now, since I already have this working on my main system, I'm going to swap over to this virtual machine. So run the exe and it's going to tell us that it can't find certain resources but that doesn't matter because uh of the windows 11 taskbar we're not going to edit those there we are i've just brought on the ico files onto the desktop so we can have a look through here and see what are the icons that we can change so if we go to general icons this is the folder with the general icons we're going to drop this down and we're going to disable automatically restart explorer and drag this out a bit so each one of these we're going to be able to double click and it'll show us a preview so we find the one that we want to change we go to change i'm opening the windows blue folder and i'm going to click on this one there you go and same thing with this we're going to change it to this next we're going to go here change it to this now I'm having a bit of an issue with these two. They're gonna change. However, it breaks transparency. So what I do with these ones is it'll actually let me change this to the PNG. So if I open the PNG, 
it's this one and this one now it lets me do that i don't know why it doesn't let me do it with many others it still wants the ico file okay so we've got them all changed out for the blue versions of their files including these two which I've had to use the PNG files for, not the ICO files. Next thing we're going to want to do is open Task Manager. We're going to open File Explorer at the same time. File Explorer is going to come up as a task here. We're going to restart this. Okay, then we're going to open File Explorer again. Go to this PC. Click on the hard drive. Go to Cleanup. And we're going to want to clean up the thumbnails. There we go. I don't know why that took such a long time. If nothing's happened, open Task Manager again and Reset Explorer again. And there we go. These folders have turned blue. And so has every single folder on this computer. However, some, for some reason, stay the original yellow color, namely things like the zip file. However, if we swap back to my actual computer now, we can see that things like zip files, I've changed to, to have the WinRAR logo anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So that's just one step that we can make Windows a little bit more like Mac OS in that regard. And I really feel like it adds a touch of personalization to this operating system. So I plan on doing a few more of these because I've got some other ideas I'd like to share. In case you haven't noticed, there's no bin at the top left of my desktop and I've been using almost like a spotlight search to open files. So I'll do a few more in the future if you'd like to see that. And um, I will add some of the files into the description. If you want the blue files, I'll share those with you. Uh, however, I'm going to link the program used um, because I'm not allowed to share that with you. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Please leave it a like and a comment. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.